say, and you can maybe even start the whole show. Yo, what is going on guys? I'm here in Santa Monica, California for the day. The reason why I'm here is because there is a Logic Everybody documentary that's being live screened later on at the Wilter Theater uh, in downtown Los Angeles. So excited for that. They're also doing like a little Q&A or something. But that's not until later this evening. So I got about four or five hours to kill. So I'm gonna be hanging out in Santa Monica and getting getting my LA, LA vibes in, in for the month. I'm not sure if I just showed up on the right day or if they do this every day, but a bunch of streets back there are closed off for farmer's markets, so uh, I might go and check that out because I'm, uh, I'm getting a bit hungry here. I was about two seconds away from walking into this huge Nike factory when I realized I got, I got the NMDs on and I don't think they take kindly to that. So without straying too far uh, from my diet and getting a burger like I originally planned, lunch will be uh, grilled chicken club from Johnny Rockets because it was the most convenient place to eat around here. Also, I want to hurry up and get to the beach, but I need food first. To the few of you that are familiar with my live streams and are around enough to know uh, what the significance of, of that taco truck back there was, is uh, TwitchCon is going to be in Long Beach. My incentive to get everyone to come to TwitchCon is that I'm buying an absurd amount of tacos for everyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, you go to TwitchCon. If you care at all about video games and or Twitch or tacos, you're gonna wanna go to TwitchCon. All right, so off in the distance way over there, you can see the Santa Monica Pier just maybe. You can see a little bit of it. Uh, I spent a solid maybe 10, 15 minutes walking on the pier and realized yeah, there's not, there's not much for me to do here. I walked around, saw the pier, um, I'm by myself, so uh, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't too much for me to do there. But I'm headed off now to the Wilter. I'm over to the Wilter right now. Couple hours until showtime, but uh, I'm gonna be a good boy. Stand in line and wait to try and get the best seat possible because it's just general admission tickets for everyone. All right, we are here, downtown. There's the wheel turn back there. Crazy long line, they already opened the doors. So uh, I, gotta, I gotta hurry my way in line just so I can wait some more. That's the entrance to the wheel turn. The line goes back at least like another two blocks. Good Lord. Can you guys see? That's, that's where, you see the, the box office sign right there and the wheel turn sign? That's where the entrance is at. This is where the line is. It literally goes all the way around to here. Good God. Right, last update before I get inside. We finally have made it to the very front. Uh, it only took like, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half to finally get all the way around the building and to the entrance. They haven't started yet as of like five, 10 minutes ago. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can one, just get inside, and then two, see the screen at all. That's really loud, so let's go inside. I'm not sorry for making this album. And I made this album from a place in my heart of love. And I'm black and I'm proud of shit. And I'm 
biracial. I love my fans. It's going to be celebratory. It's not going to be the last time I make music, but it's just, it's, you know, it's... I'm, I'm, all my fans who really appreciate me, they're going to follow me on this journey. Uh, and we're actually going to hold hands together, and whether it's acting or writing novels and movies and anything. Me and my buddy uh, Brian here are, are writing awesome stuff when it comes to like film and television and all these really cool ideas. So I want you guys to follow me beyond because you know ultra 85 will make eight you know, like you call them mixtapes if you want but eight albums you know eight projects over eight years and now i'm excited to go into the next round of entertainment on the fucking big screen man so <laughs> that's what's up and i played it and um uh one thing i'll say is it, it, it meant a lot um it's really weird. So, so you can understand, there's a whole bunch of phones and there's a whole bunch of people filming this question. And I gave them my word that I wouldn't really discuss uh, that for a little while to, because I didn't want to use his name to promote my album. And the reason that is, is because that verse that he sent me meant so much to me and was so personal to me um, that I wanted it to be for only real fans who would stay to the end of the album to actually listen to it. Yeah. So meant so much to hear this man that I idolize, you know what I mean, as just a man, uh, rapping from the perspective of a little Bobby and a young man growing up as a rapper, and then him also turning the page and rapping from his own perspective, giving me advice. And to me, that was like a dream come true, you know, and, I, I, and uh, I'll kind of leave it at that. I'm going to have a really cool in-depth interview with Nick Huff from Hard Knock TV about it. Yeah. So, uh, Sure you check that out, but, uh, all I can say is when I heard it, I couldn't believe it, and uh, my wife actually has footage of when I got off the phone with J. Cole, and I was like, oh my god, because <laughs> he said I could use it, so it was really special. Thank you, dude. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, it's so, I don't know, it's, I'm not trying to get weird, but I, know, I, don't know, I don't know if I ever actually told them how much what they do has changed my life, because, um, you know, this many people, like this is just the people that made it here today. It's crazy to think that there's like a gazillion more fans out there in the world. And all those people out there, they look to me for guidance like that young man who was just here. And it can be very, uh, it can be a lot of fucking pressure, you know what I mean? But what allows me to decompress are those people, the people who make video games and the people who are incredibly artistic and genuine and amazing and give me something, uh, at least to escape it. You know, it's funny, when I was uh, like 19, uh, and I played the first Uncharted. I was, uh, I used it, I used it to escape. I used it to escape. I would play the game because I hated my fucking life and I hated my job and I hated where I lived and I hated having no money. And then I played the second one and, uh, same situation. And then I played the third one and by then I had been signed and things were really cool. And then by the time I played the fourth Uncharted, I realized that I was not playing the game to escape my reality. I was blessed enough to have focused and stayed determined to achieve what I wanted that I was now playing these video games to enhance my reality. So it's video games, long story short. Dude, like I always say, persistence, determination, realism, and wanting success more than your next breath, you know what I mean? You have to envision it, see it, and do it. Um, there's people in this crowd who know that there's a secret language of success, and it's go out and do it. There's no buts. And that's a real thing. You have to go and do it. You have to say that you're going to do it, and then you do it. And there's some people in this crowd that be like, well, yeah, it's easy for you to say that, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you, you did it, so you can say that. Well, you know, but there's bills, but I got to do this, but I'm in school, but this, but that. Well, they fucked up, and they're never going to attain their dreams. It's the person who says, I'm going to do it, and does anything and everything in a realistic manner to attain it, who will achieve their dreams. So, just be yourself 100%, man. Because I'm going be, to be honest, I got so much shit, bro. I got so much shit. You guys saw it just for being who I am. Like, I'm a fucking Rubik's Cube solvent, anime loving, wife and puppy loving, 
happy motherfucker, and that's me. And so many people tell me that's whack, or it's corny, or it's this, or it's that. Well, yeah, I could be corny all day, but at least I'm me, because I would rather be hated for who I am than not for who I'm not.